Okie dokie then, the big question of the day. What is the difference between qualitative and quantitative research? And believe it or not, the answer is not as freaking boring as the question actually sounds. Now, when students first learn about these concepts, they tend to think that qualitative and quantitative are in direct opposition to each other. Kind of like Batman versus the Joker, or uh, Daenerys Targaryen versus Cersei Lannister. Wow, I need a moment. I just totally nerded out. Deep breath. Okay, we're back. Qualitative and quantitative research are not opposites. It's better to look at them as tools, like a hammer and a screwdriver. A hammer and a screwdriver aren't opposites. They're just tools that are used in different situations. I mean, I guess sometimes together, depending on what you're fixing or you're building. Qualitative and quantitative are themselves tools with one singular purpose, to gather information. Scientists like to call this information data. But both qualitative and quantitative research go about gathering the information differently. Qualitative research is usually exploratory. In other words, you have no real idea of what you're looking for, or even what you're going to find. You just really want information, usually about a group of people, which scientists then call a population. Some qualitative information gathering techniques are interviews, which is basically the scientific term for asking someone a question, or I guess observations, which is a scientific term for stalking. Quantitative research, on the other hand, is used when you're actually trying to prove a point. You have an idea or a prediction and you want to show the world that you are right. So you set up a way in which to support your idea. Scientists call this an experiment. In the real world, we are all scientists, utilizing both qualitative and quantitative research methods to survive. All right, you want an example. Let's say you're from the U.S. and you just got a full ride to college in Iceland. If you're from Iceland, this example just ain't going to work. And when you get to Iceland, you discover that you are really, really lonely. You want to find a mate, someone to love, someone to Netflix and chill with. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. You all know what I'm talking about. You have no idea had a date in Iceland. Is it the same as in the United States? Will, I don't know, like dabbing and saying, how you doing, work in Iceland? How are you going to find out? What would you do? I mean, well, first, you would probably go out there and gather as much information about Icelandic dating practices as you possibly could. You would probably go out to like a club or a library or a supermarket and watch people mingle. You would take mental notes on their body language, their facial expressions, their terminologies, even their best Icelandic pickup lines. You may go up to some Icelandic hottie and ask them, how do you do it? Or even better, go up to someone who's not so hot in Iceland and ask them how they do it. All right, regardless, great job. You just conducted qualitative research. You actually gather information where before you had none. Well, okay, what would you do next? Well, you probably take all the information you gathered and look for themes or trends. What stands out? What generally seems to work for those crazy Icelanders or Icelandic people or whatever you want to call them? Maybe you noticed from both your observations and interviews that Icelandic people flirt by talking about their cats. Maybe the overarching theme is that Icelandic people find cats very, very sexy. I'm too sexy for my love, too sexy for my love, love's going to leave me. Enough of that. That uh, that was a mistake. Let's just uh, let's get back to it. So now you think to find love, 
or at least to find some affection in Iceland, you need to have a cat, or at least have some fantastic cat stories. All right, congratulations. You just constructed a hypothesis from your qualitative data. Scientists gave this technique a really fancy name. They call it inductive content analysis, which is essentially looking for themes from your qualitative data to come up with a hypothesis. So, in this case, inductive content analysis occurred when you figured out from your observations and your interviews that cats are an important part of the Atlantic mating rituals. So, are you now ready to date? I don't know, maybe. Maybe you want to see if your idea about cats holds any weight. Maybe you want to test your new theory. All right, so you hit the streets. Or, I mean, it's Iceland, so you hit the volcanic hot springs. And you start approaching people. Okay, you go up to 20 people. With 10 of them, you talk about how much you love your cat. And you give them some riveting cat adventure story. Then you lean in close your eyes, and hope for a kiss. With 10 more people, you talk about anything but cats, and then lean in for a kiss. You then count which group had more kisses reciprocated, the cat group or the non-cat group. If more kisses were reciprocated with the cat story, then, I don't know, maybe you have something. I mean, probably not enough to go out and publish your results, but you have something. Okay, you just conducted quantitative research through an experiment, albeit a horrific, terrible, unethical one. But, I mean, in a weird, quirky kind of way, I guess you were a scientist. Okay, so now maybe you kind of start to understand the difference between quantitative and qualitative research. So, how do you know when to use which research method? You should probably use quantitative if you already have a hypothesis or a prediction and you have some control over what you are studying. For qualitative research, you probably need, I don't know, one of, I guess, about three scenarios. First, I would use qualitative research if I did not have any hypothesis and I need to get more information even to construct one. Second, I would probably use qualitative research if the population I'm trying to study is so rare that it would be almost impossible or unethical to test a sample. I don't know, like studying the, the sexual habits of red-headed conjoined twins. Good luck studying that. I guess one other way you may want to use qualitative research is if you've already conducted an experiment. So you already did your quantitative research. But you want to make your work, I guess, more interesting. You want to add some color to it. I mean, quotes from an interview tend to be a lot more interesting than the numerical results from an experiment. Okay, what did you really learn here? I'm hoping at least some of you are starting to understand the difference between qualitative and quantitative research. Others, I don't know, you probably took away something like, if you want some action in Iceland, get a cat. <laughs>